I'd like to welcome everybody to this session. It's an hour's lunchtime webinar. Um, I'm Caroline Bold and my, with my colleague Helen Woods, we are the co-chairs of the British Association of Social Workers Criminal Justice Group. And it's an absolute pleasure um, and a thrill, to be honest, to have this first session specifically with PACT, our colleagues at PACT, talking about all things um, social work uh, in prison with parents, um, but also we're going to specifically have a bit of an emphasis, if you will, today on um, mothers in prison um, and to represent also the fact that today is Orange the World. So it's the UN International Day of Elimination of Violence Against Women and Girls, so orange. Um, and we wanted to, to make sure that we include the fact that women by and large are in prison due to crimes of poverty. Um, and just making sure that that's that's clearly there. So without, you know, going on about the, our favourite subjects, um, I'd like to introduce uh, colleagues. So Joanne McCauley at McCauley, nearly, I, I knew I'd get it wrong. Um, and she's the Assistant Director of Services at PACT. And of course, we've got uh, Becky Ray, who's at HMP Eastwood Park, and Katia Parent, who is at HMP Send. So if I can pass over now to Helen, who's going to give us a brief introduction to why this session. Thanks, Caroline. Um, it's really lovely to be here with everybody today. Um, I just wanted to give you a bit of background about our thinking um, around this session and why we feel that the role of social workers engaging with parents in prison, particularly mothers, um, needs kind of greater priority and a bit more attention. Um, I suppose from myself and Caroline's perspective, we're both in social work higher education. Um, and we had a concern that criminal justice social work um, is kind of sidelined in social work education settings, partly because of the probation social work split that took place in the late 90s, early noughties. Oh. Sorry, can people turn their microphones off, please? And let speaking, getting a bit of feedback. Thank you. Um, so that was part of our concern about that kind of neglect and students sometimes asking us for more information about how to engage with people in criminal justice settings, um, but also looking at how parents are engaged with in a variety of social work arenas and thinking about the breadth of social work engagement with people within the criminal justice and the prison system. So certainly in my sort of child protection, youth justice, probation career before coming into higher education, I would meet parents at a variety of stages in the prison system. It might be recently released from custody. It may be engaging with parents to undertake parenting assessments prior to release from custody. It might be thinking about how to support children to visit parents in the prison system and um, the appropriateness and concern around some of those settings. Um, I'm fortunate in that I've worked in the probation service and youth justice service for a lengthy period of time, so I don't lack a kind of confidence and knowledge around engaging with the prison system, but I'm aware that many social work colleagues do. And I suppose more widely, um, we're concerned about um, the kind of individualisation of client work within social work settings. So it may be that we're working with um, people, family members kind of in isolation without thinking about the wider family context. And I know when I was working in the probation service, um, I was very aware that one of our kind of weaknesses that, that, that we would often engage with individual parents without thinking about the wider family. And that was certainly something that I kind of came up against in, in child protection, where probation colleagues were thinking about, you know, the parent who was released from prison, but not the impact that had on the children necessarily. Example. I don't want to sound like I'm doing my probation colleagues a disservice, um, but just thinking about different ways of engaging with um, families really. So I suppose our concern is thinking about the wider family network and how we can have a kind of um, family centred approach in our social work practice. So that's those are the kinds of concerns that brought us together um, and I'm sure we'll have um, a really few, fruitful question and answer session later on. So I'm going to hand over to Joanne. Can I just, remember, just say, to, no it's my fault I should have mentioned it, um, just a reminder that there is a chat function that's open, please let us know if you can't access it. Please do include in the chat who you are 
and what brought you here. We want to keep this as much of a conversation as possible. Um, we're also going to include um, a Menti survey um, a little later, so that that link will be put into that chat. Um, so thanks very much for that. Back to you, Helen. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Joanne Mulcahy, um, who's going to tell us more about um, the work of PACT. Hi, thank you so much. Um, I believe we've got a presentation that is very kindly being um, shared on screen for us. Um, thank you, Wayne, in the background there, making everything happen. Um, but yeah, my name is Jo Mulcahy. Um, Thank you all so much for, for giving up your time to be here. I know it's a lot of people's lunchtime. Um, we hope that you find it really helpful. Um, I'm Assistant Director of Services for PACT. Um, I've come from a background of working with children through teaching, through um, forest schools, community play initiatives, um, and then through sort of children's therapy and um, particularly bereavement work with children as well. Um, that was the right one. That, that was the one wing. I was just waffling over the, the beginning of it. Um, Apologies, not quite sure what happened there, but I'll get it back for you. Thank you. That's OK. Teams flummoxes me most days of the week, to be honest. Um, so that's the kind of background that I'm coming from. And one of the really um, happy jobs that I have at PACT is managing some national projects. Um, and one of the national projects that I'm managing at the moment is called Together a Chance. Um, it's being delivered directly by my colleagues, so I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves. So we've got Katia. Hi, I'm Katia. I am the social worker at HMP Send. Um, I got, I've qualified as a social worker in Canada um, and I did about seven, eight years there as a child protection worker in various different um, departments. And I moved over to the UK about three years ago where I started working with um, Surrey County Council under the assessment team. Um, and then I moved on over to Heathrow Travel Care, which is a team of crisis social workers over at Heathrow Airport. Um, and then after that, I moved over to PACT. I did a different role, the family engagement worker, and I started doing the, um, the social work role when it started a, a few months ago. Thank you, Katia. And our other colleague that's with us today from PACT is Becky. Hi guys, uh, my name is Becky and I'm the social worker based at Eastwood Park uh, Women's Estate. So my background is um, I've been a social worker for about eight years now, um, but more so in adult social work, um, supporting them with individual needs as well as needs as parents. Um, so a combination of sort of long term and crisis work. Um, before PACT, I was in a local authority homeless team sort of responding to COVID. And yeah, then obviously really recently, um, back in April, came over to PACT. Thanks, Becky. And we're going to hear more from Katia and Becky about their practice on the ground in a little bit. Um, first of all, I just want to say a huge thank you to Caroline and Helen, um, who have been splendid colleagues. Um, thank you so much for providing us a platform for this work and the, the issues that have been coming up. Um, and thank you to Bazu as well for um, agreeing to host us as part of this, this sort of programme of events. So we're really grateful. Thank you so much. So PACT to the Prison Advice and Care Trust, um, we provide family services in prisons across England and Wales. We do that through um, caseworkers in, in custody. We've got contracts with probation to deliver some work on release. Um, we've got contracts to deliver group work and education for parenting and relationship courses. Um, we've got, uh, we manage a national helpline for prisoners, families, um, a befriending service and lots of other bits and pieces that are going on. Um, and as I mentioned, one of the things that I want to talk about today is the Together a Chance project. Um, and I just want to say a thank you to the Sylvia Adams Charitable Trust uh, for making this possible through their generous funding. So if we can move to the next slide, I can tell you about how it all started. Um, so the social worker um, role was first recommended uh, in an evaluation of a separate project that we had called Visiting Mum, which was a project that took children in Wales to visit their mothers in prison because there are no women's prisons in Wales. Um, and so we recognised that there were increased difficulties for children um, and their carers in, in making that journey. Um, you can read all about that on our website if you want, so I'm not going to spend much time talking about that. Um, but that it was suggested there that social workers could be introduced into the, the family workforce in order to build bridges between services and better support those complex issues. That was echoed by Lord Farmer 
um, so there was a report into what worked to help women to um, stop offending. And one of the things that he suggested was that um, social work roles as part of a multidisciplinary team could actually be a really beneficial addition to the women's estate. So we worked with Sylvia Adams to put a pilot project in place. So this is two social workers, Becky at HMP Eastwood Park and Carter at HMP Send in Surrey. Um, and this is what we're aiming to do. And you, well, what we're going to go on to is a, a bit about how all the different bits and pieces that we've got in this project are going to come together. Um, essentially, we're working to help prisoners um, who are incarcerated in those two prisons to have better interaction with the system um, which they're involved in already. So if we can go to the next slide. Um, thank you, Wayne, behind the scenes. I know I'm making demands. Um, our work is always aimed towards the best outcomes for the child. And I just want to make it really clear that we know that contact or custody of children isn't always that best outcome. So I just want to address that straight up. Um, but by working with women intensively, even where that is the case, we can help them to reflect and come to terms with that in a safe and healthy way and help them to move on. Um, we want to work with people to help them be better involved, better informed, um, and to reduce the trauma of imprisonment, both on them and their families, um, and build those better relationships that lead to better outcomes for that whole family. Um, I'm going to hand over to Becky, who's going to take us through a bit more about what the project involves, for your information. So if we can go to the next slide, um, Becky, that, that's over to you. Yeah, hi. So, um, yeah, the social work role in both prisons is sort of aimed at advocating for women whose children are at risk of or are likely to be taken into local authority care um, or where they have social work involvement um, to form part of the team around the child. So that can involve things like active court proceedings um, or just sort of those ongoing discussions about where the child's likely to live and quite intensive work with the local authority. Um, so a big part of the work we do is actual one to one work with the mothers. Um, so Katia and I are both based on site five days a week. Um, she's going to go into a little bit more detail about that on her slide. Um, but yeah, working really closely with mothers and their families um, on a daily basis. Um, the intensity of the work that we do really does vary depending on the needs of the mother. And so that's kind of hard to call. But um, the aim is is quite intensive work, obviously, because the cases tend to be much more complex. Um, there's also a big part of our role which involves sort of information um, and sharing that information. So as the only two social workers in prisons at the moment, um, there's a lot of learning uh, and a lot of information that we're gathering and that we want to be able to share with other people. Um, so we're developing a social work toolkit at the moment, um, which can be used within our own organisation, but also shared out amongst the prison system and hopefully local authorities as well. Um, I'd say the last bit really and much more widely is the strategic change element. So it's my favourite bit of the work in a way, because I think it's just so great to be able to see what's happening and how these mothers and their families are being affected and really feed that back into trying to change the system to meet those needs. So we're working really closely with a number of local authorities at the moment um, to try and sort of develop their induction processes and sort of share training ideas and work really collaboratively to improve those systems. I would just also really quickly want to add that the advocacy support it actually in ways it kind of goes both ways so part of the role is advocating for the mothers um, within the local authority systems but also at times advocating the other way and sort of helping the mothers to understand the local authority and their processes and sort of help them to make sense of that thank you Wayne <laughs> thanks Becky over to you Katia right so um like Becky said you know, this can look like a lot of things. So on the slide here, you can read a few um, practical ways that this can look like, but I'll just tell you a bit of an example of a, a case study just to help you see how it can actually look like in practice. Um, so I was working with a woman who is serving a two year custodial sentence. So she has two sets of kids. So she has two of the children who are going for adoption and then two of them are going into long term foster care. Um, so this means two, so, two social workers, one support worker, um, two sets of carers and biological family involved. Um, so that's a lot of people to manage, let alone when mother you know, isn't in prison. So it's a lot to take on for just one case. Um, so the main thing that we're hoping to achieve in this situation was to rebuild a relationship between the mother and her children in foster care. 
um, and then to get her to understand the adoption of the other children, um, as well as kind of mend that relationship with the, the social workers. So practically, um, I'll just list out a few examples of what this actually looked like over the course of you know, many months. Um, so basically, uh, the main thing was that all communication with the social worker came to me directly to pass on to the mother. So this could be printing documents, uh, you know, lack review minutes, any kind of information that she needs, documents, passing on letters, giving updates to the children. Um, and then we decided to set up monthly video calls between the social worker, myself and the mother. And that was to um, work on building that relationship um, and sharing updates with the children. So that was set up on a monthly basis, which could in some circumstances we could have done it face to face, but this wasn't the most appropriate thing. So we decided on video. Um, and then I also engaged with mum in doing incel workbooks and then I fed that back um, to the social workers so they can keep you know track on on her progress how she's doing how she's spending her time in prison um, I was also present when the mother was told about the children's adoption and so I was able to give her support um, emotional support afterwards so just to give you a bit of an example obviously this is extremely difficult for her to you know understand that so when she went back to her room some of the officers or the staff could see that she wasn't doing well so they would call me and I would go out and speak with her um, directly and just kind of see what where she was what she was thinking um, and then any question or worries I was able to feed that back to the appropriate worker afterwards um, so really keeping that line of communication open and then eventually all of this led to the mother actually seeing her children on video for the first time in over two years um, so that was really really great for her um, and yeah so after her release basically there was a um, an, a lack review that was planned a month later and we planned for me to accompany mom just to help her for the first big meeting um, I called her about a week after her release and she actually told me, you know what, I've been talking to my social worker on the phone um, and I feel comfortable attending myself. So all that hard work that we did over the last couple of months um, really made her confident in attending these meetings um, and really advocating for herself. Uh, Wayne, if you can swap the... <laughs> Great, pass it <coughs> over to Becky. Uh, yes, yeah, so obviously those are some examples of the things that we can do from within custody um, to support mum and to help her as part of the process. But these are just like a few little ideas of things that we've come across so far um, that really help us coming from the local authority side. Um, so the first one is just being aware of time. Um, obviously, local authority social workers have time scales coming out of their ears. Um, but I think sometimes, like you said, the, the prison regime works slightly differently. And um, we have had situations where minutes are shared sort of quite last minute or assessments being being shared. But like I said, the time scales are quite tricky and um, it's not giving mum enough time to prepare for the meetings and that's then affecting her confidence going into them. Um, so there's lots of occasions where it's fine, but it is just really being mindful of that and sort of challenging that assumption maybe um, not that everybody has it, but where it is that um, that people in prison are sort of readily available um, and that messages can be passed on to them really quickly and conveniently. Um, there is a prison regime and it, it can be quite challenging for the women to get past that sometimes. So, yeah, just being aware of time and time scales and giving notice where you can. Um, Establishing contact, really clear and simple, just get in touch as quickly as you can, like sooner the better really, so we can all start working together and sharing information. Um, communicate, so keep in touch. Um, if you are in touch with mum directly, uh, fantastic. We'd always suggest promoting face-to-face -face contact where you can. Obviously, we understand in some situations because of distance that can be more tricky, but I would sort of always say the hierarchy would be face to face video calls and then sort of letters and, and telephone calls and things like that. Um, it just sort of really helps to build that relationship and we can we packed work as family services can sort of assist with that where where we're in place in the different prison estates. Um, yeah, I think that's I think that's it for my three. <laughs> this is going to roll um, for us. <laughs> I'll, I'll add right. to, to that, like Becky has mentioned, um, anything to do with contact, just share your contact details, um, you know, let us know who you are, be involved, share all the documents that need sharing, just all of the information for us to have so we can work together. Um, and then finally, really just be open-minded, um, challenge your biases, 
have conversations with your coworkers, um, and just help these people as you would any other parents, um, whether they are in prison or not. I think we're ready for the next slide. Oh, that's me again. Yeah. Um, so the um, case study that I was speaking to earlier, this is actually a, a quote from the so one of the social workers that was involved. So I'll just read it out for you. Um, so she said, I honestly think that the children have hugely benefited from the communication I've had with you and their mom. And also, I hope that having established a relationship with mom prior to her release will help her to continue to do well and be able to sustain a positive relationship with the children with my ongoing support. So it just really goes to show that, you know, a few months of working hard together and can make a world of difference for these children, for this mother, um, and just the work that the social worker is able to now do with this family now that, you know, mom is out in the community. Thank you. Um... And then just finally from me, I guess, to say um, the next slide has our contact details um, or my contact details anyway. So you can find out more about PACT on our website as a general um, rule. There's a few resources for children on there, including a book called Locked Out, um, which helps parents and children to talk about imprisonment issues together. Um, you can also order hard copies of those. If you drop me an email after this, I, I can sort out some hard copies for you, hopefully. Um, and then that's my email address. If you want to know any more about the project or if you think there's anything that we could link in with, we're really anxious to make sure that we make the most of this pilot um, in terms of linking in with as many people as possible, being able to assist in whatever way possible um, and generally to make the biggest impact that we can. After this event, um, we will drop around. Um, we've done sort of a guide for social workers who might not know where to start with contact in a prison, um, because why would you? Um, so there's a little guide with just some helpful um, websites and some information that you can hopefully use. Um, we'll drop around this presentation afterwards for your interest. Um, and we'll what we aim to do is try and answer as many questions as possible. So if you do have questions, no question too big, no question too small, um, please do drop them into chat because we will collate those and then any that we don't answer later on um, by the end of this session, we will aim to, to collate and send out some answers later on. So please do um, use this opportunity to, to gain whatever kinds of knowledge you need. Um, but if you've got something specific that you want to chat about, that's my email address on that slide as well. You've heard, obviously, one of the things that we um, we really like to do is to find out what the wider issues are and support workforce development, um, both across PACT, um, our prison colleagues and across the social worker um, profession generally. And one of the starting points for this, I think, um, that would be really helpful for us is to look at what the challenges and barriers are to engage in from your point of view. Um, and to do this, Caroline has very niftily and kindly set up a mentee. Um, and I think the chat um, contains that link right up at the beginning. Um, there's another refreshed bit in the chat. Um, so you can go on to that and answer the um, the questions that are on there, drop your thoughts in and we can take a look at that later and see how we can use that then to help things along. Caroline, is there anything else people need to know about the Menti? Yeah, no, I'm happy to, to add with this and um, what we're doing is we're collating people's views um, around what are the barriers um, that there are to working with people in prison, but with parents in prison. And what we've given you is an opportunity. If you click on the link, it'll take you directly to Menti. Um, and you can add uh, up to five words um, and what we'll do is you take out some of the if anybody has typos please don't worry or if you if you write something you think I wish I hadn't um, you don't need to put your shopping list in there but if there's something you feel actually got in the way how do I even get there or how do I know where someone is placed what happens when I arrive and they say that the visits are cancelled and you've just travelled 200 miles um, what happens? Who, who do you speak to? How does it even feel as, as a woman going into a male prison? Um, certainly experiences that we've we've certainly had. Um, so please go into that link um, and, and add. And what I'll do is as we go through the conversation, uh, I will feed back on, on where we're at. So uh, hopefully you've found the link. Has everybody found the link OK? Can I have a thumbs up or a hi de hi? 
Is the link working? Is anybody able to give me? Yes, thank you. Oh, that's, that's a lovely function. Please do. The link isn't opening. Is that right? Let me just find again. So if I can ask you, the other way to do it is to go to www.menti.com. And then up will come on your screen. Um, it'll ask you for a voting code. It's opening for you. It might not open for different people using different types of systems. So www.menti.com and then the number that you're looking for, and I will put this into the chat, is 4761 4149. And if you put that number in, you'll be able to contribute. And what we'll be doing is we'll be collating the feedback um, on that um, and we'll be sharing it around with the, the guide. Uh, that um, Joe has just mentioned. The second question that we've asked people to contribute to is what would help to work better with parents in prison? Is it more of these conversations? Is it about having a drop in session? Is it about actually just continuing these conversations? Is it having a Katia and, and, and Becky in more than two prisons? Um, is it the fact that how do they connect with us? How do they get to know? And when we think about social work in, in its broadest terms, is there something also about maybe social work education and how we're maybe not teaching around uh, prison social work in the same way as maybe perhaps we did in the past? So, I mean, please do add in there, you know, this might be a completely new area of practice. You don't even know what's happening, um, but it might also be something that you used to do. Um, but can't do it in the same way. Um, but it also might be that you thought things were simple and then the COVID-19 has actually shown a whole different world. So please do add, the questions are, what barriers are there in working with parents in prison? And thank you for the uh, contributions at the moment. I'm seeing communication limited. Communication seems to be coming out really strongly. Anxiety, uh, consent. Is another one. Um, so please add your five words um, or phrases. And then the second slide is what would help to work with parents better. Um, you know, it, we, it's going to be an interesting space at the moment. Um, as we mentioned earlier on, this is the, the day for um, activism. So it's the first day of 16 days of activism uh, around violence against women and girls. And the majority of women are in prison. Uh, relate to crimes of poverty um, and so we could look at uh, custodial sentences as potentially a collateral consequence of poverty if not uh, directly discrimination um, against women we know that women experience double devancy when they when they when they are arrested um, I know that there's work underway um, for example to look at women who are arrested um, in relation to domestic violence and call outs of domestic violence, but also uh, women are triply and parents generally, but women specifically are triply um, discriminated against in being mothers. Um, so while that's working, would it be OK if people could ask questions in chat or if you wanted to ask questions outright um, and unmute, that would be useful as well. Um, but also, I mean, I just wondered if I could come back to the three of you, Joel, Katya and Becky, how has it been doing this project? Because I think watching it from afar, I think I, I wasn't I wasn't backward in coming forward and saying, can I come and work with you? I just wonder how has it been? How, what has your experience been uh, in doing this work? Perhaps if I come to Joel first. Sure. So from a strategic point of view, um, it took some time to set up the project um, to work out um, with HMPPS, the prison service, how we wanted that to look and what best practice might look like. Um, but we received good support from the prisons who were very eager to take part. I think there wasn't a question um, in their minds about the value of that role um, and the difference that that role might make. Um, one of the other considerations that we had was because we've got existing family teams being really clear about how this role added value to that family team and not took over the role of family support workers. Um, but what we found is actually that it enhances the role of the other family team because it allows them more time to deal with other cases. Um, it takes away some of the intense and complex work, um, which is then dealt with by that specialist role. 
So I think in, in general terms, there's been great support and there's been great interest from a lot of organisations. Um, there's been interest in how we roll this out. And so I think over the next two years, what we'll be looking at is how we make the maximum impact and make the maximum um, uh, make the biggest case we can, I guess, for for making sure that this is embedded um, as far as we possibly can. Thank you. And, um, is it OK to switch off your mic? Sorry about that. Um, Katia and Becky, um, how has it been maybe coming to Katia first? Um, Katia, is it OK to, sorry, um, by blessing, um, is it OK to ask you what's your experience, you know, from working and, and is there anything that you've found um, challenging? Yeah, I mean, it's been great. It's been really good to be able to be that person on the ground to offer support to these women because we're finding what well, I'm finding, at least that there's a lot of them that need a lot of support and they just don't know where to begin. Um, and it's nice to be able to be that kind of main person and, and know how to connect with social services on the outside, know who to turn to, to ask these questions that they might not be equipped to answer. They you know, might not have the the independence or just the, the you know, nervous or or it's just a bit too too difficult for them. Um, one of the challenge or, or barrier um, that I've been up against, um, if you will, is um, I think that unfortunately the system seems to be a bit stacked against prisoners. Um, for example, I was wor I'm working with a woman who is going to be released in March and her um, children are under the care of the local authority and she really wants to be involved because the kids are most likely going to be released, uh, going to go to her when she's released. Um, and so we're trying to make a plan for her to work with social services, to be engaged as much as possible, you know, be present at the meeting, whether she's phoning in or um, whether it's by video. So really trying to make a plan um, to have her engage as much as she can before release, before it's too late and using that time as, as usefully as possible. Um, and we're just getting barriers by the local authority saying, you know, I need a passport, I need consent, I need ID. Um, and it, these are just not things that these people in prison can access or um, that is easy for them to just, you know, sign a consent and send it over. It's all things that we have to really be mindful of when we're asking for that information. Um, so I think it's just those biases um, and just realizing that there's things that, you know, these people can't really access. And it, it, it's nice if the, the professionals in the community can ask this, these questions and see, right, how can we brainstorm? How can we make this happen? Um, so that's been the biggest challenge, I think. But generally, it's been going really well. <laughs> that seems incredibly positive. I mean, it's, it's in a way, it's not surprising to me that it's gone really well because having met the three of you, you're very much coming at it from a, a values perspective. Um, and I just wondered, um, and and I think maybe that being in social work, we we do try and do as much as we can, often with very little. Um, and I just wondered, maybe if I asked Becky the maybe a wee bit more of a challenging question, how would you how would you don't panic? How would you maybe answer those who are concerned about is social work? Should social work be in prison? What does that mean? Um, particularly with the stop the 500, we're saying look, you know the fe the female offender strategy saying that we we need to stop imprisoning women, particularly like, for goodness sake, pregnant women. Um, and then you've got Dominic Raab saying, not under my watch, will we reduce the prison, the prison population? So I just wonder, Becky, what's your, how, how is there a tension for you in being a social worker working in prison or or not? No, I think I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be as a social worker. I mean, for, for me personally, as as you sort of said, Caroline, like um, a lot of the work that I do in this role is very value based. Um, I believe in it so much and I'm very passionate about it um, but I think for me as a social worker I want to be in those situations where there there is injustice and there's discrimination and like Katia said you know people are you know really experiencing a lot of barriers and kind of feel stacked against it so to speak and for me there's a lot of um, 
I guess it's just very rewarding um, and very meaningful for me to be actually a part of that process for them and trying to support them in, in arguably one of, if not the most difficult periods of their lives. Um, and like I said, just trying to support them by advocating for them. And like I said, ultimately what we want to do is support these women to a point where they can, they feel empowered and confident in speaking for themselves and being able to engage in these processes independently. Um, I mean, a question as to like the sentencing and the experiences of women in the prison system, I'll sort of hold back on, but for as long as there are women in the prison system, then that's, that's where I'm, you know, I, they absolutely, I think the support is very much needed. Um, so yeah, that's. <laughs> I mean, uh, hopefully it wasn't. I think this is exactly the sort of things that were uh, presented at a previous uh, conversation I've shared with you around mothers on trial mm. and looking at and birth companions have said the same. It feels there's feels a real rub in that you're trying to work with what where you uh, where you're at, but at the same time fight, you know, argue against women even being in this position. So I think, as you say, social work's jobs to be where injustice is until it isn't. Um, so no, that's really great. Um, thank you. We've got a couple of questions that have come in, and if I just if I bunch the two questions um, that I've got, so how are you measuring impact? Maybe that's to Joe. And also, have you experienced any resistance from prisons? Perhaps if I if I ask Becky and, and Katia that second one. So maybe Joe, how are you measuring impact? It's a good question. It is an excellent question um, and something that I realised that I was quite clear about without explaining remotely how we were doing that. Um, so we've got an evaluation partner, um, which is Cascade, the social research arm at Cardiff University. Um, Dr Alison Reese has worked with us before and she's been involved, her and a small team have been involved from the very beginning of this. So we designed some impact tools together. Um, we designed some case trackers so that we could pick up on the key points at which we were helping Helping. Um, and we've also got a few other bits and pieces going on, one of which is a questionnaire for social workers. Um, we've also got questionnaires for um, the mothers that we're working with about how they found our involvement and then there'll be sort of follow up focus groups and interviews as we go along. Um, but the, the social workers have only been in post since April this year, so that's still at fairly early stages. We are hoping to have um, a report at the end of our first year, so by sort of next late spring, early summer. Um, some of the early impact that we're coming across, though, is the, the bridging of the gap between community services and prison services, where there's great work going on on both sides, but actually those sides aren't really talking to each other. Um, so one of the biggest impacts we've had is being that link between what's going on in the community, what's going on in custody, being able to help with assessments and reports, um, being able to make sure that mum gets to the court appointments, um, and all those sort of things in between that there can be a barrier to um, engage in from what we can see. Um, but we are really keen to share the impact. So we hope to do some um, impact events maybe later on. Um, so please do just let us know if you want to be kept updated with any of that. We're happy to share any learning. Um, we're happy to join any other bits and pieces that are going on where you think that learning could be well disseminated. Um, we're very keen to make sure that it's all very open um, and transparent and used as, as widely as possible. Thanks, Caroline. Oh, that's great. Thanks, Joe. And perhaps um, Becky and Katia, um, have you had any resistance from prisons? Have you experienced that? I, I can start if you want. Um, Please. Speaking for myself, um, no, not really. Um, it's it's actually the opposite. I mean, there are some protocols and, and processes that we have to go through and things are a bit more difficult um, to achieve the goals that we want. But for the most part, um, we have so at SEND we have a um, our deputy governor is very child focused and um, really in, in the best interest of the child so she's quite keen in having us trying different things and um, I'm quite lucky where I have a strong pack team with me where there's a family engagement worker and we also have a family engagement manager. I think Becky is in in the process of getting a strong team as well um, and we're hoping that all the prisons will have this strong team where different roles are attributed to different workers and so it really gives us or gives me as a social worker a chance to work on the social work cases and all of that while the rest of our team are doing other things so in terms of resistance I'd say completely the opposite um, the prison is is quite happy in giving us that work because they treat us as um, I guess expert in 
knowing what's best for these mothers and for these children because that's not something that they're necessarily used to working with they have the very risk um hat on while we have kind of the best interests of the child hat on i don't know if becky you want to add to that um yeah again i think like that point really resonated with me then about sort of like the uh the risk sort of management thing that's obviously much more of a focus of the prison system whereas I think we're perhaps a little bit more inclined to think more creatively um, and like you said it's that sort of expert knowledge the the prison system is not made up of social workers um, who are sort of aware of the different things that can be done it, it's it can be quite rigid in ways um, that's not to say that there aren't people within the system that are open to learning and developing um, but like any other organisational workplace, there is a culture. Um, and when you sort of introduce something new into an existing work culture, there is sometimes just a little bit of, I wouldn't say resistance, but perhaps a slight lack of awareness. That's not to say that people, like I said, aren't welcoming of it. It's just a process. <laughs> I mean, that's really good to hear. And, and in a way, it's not surprising. And I just wonder, if there's also something to be said about um, and as the questions that are coming up. So thank you everybody for your questions. So there's one question that does link to another question. Um, so are there plans to increase um, social workers in prisons? Um, but there's also a, not a question, but more of a point and perhaps quite a pertinent point with the conversation that's happening in Scotland at the moment around the National Care Service and whether justice social work is social work. And I, I don't know if people can hear my accent. Um, I trained and qualified in Scotland as a criminal justice social worker and then worked um, only in criminal justice services in, in England. And so it's been, and I trained at the time where Helen was talking about that separation in the late 90s. Um, so one of the, what Rose has, has pointed out is there are other jurisdictions in the UK where it, it's normal, if you like, to have this this connection. And we wondered, do you, do you connect with with counterparts in other areas? Um, and also, do you think have you had people approach you about developing that? Do you see foresee this becoming um, women only prisons um, or beyond um, to all prisons? So to answer those questions, but thank you. Uh, maybe Joe, would that be OK for you to answer? Yeah, sure. Um, so I know that there are social workers in other roles, um, but the family role, um, particularly in England and Wales, seems to be unique. Um, we haven't yet made contact with any Scottish prisons about their social work roles, but thank you very much for that. We certainly will and see if there's any learning that we can share together there. Um, the second part of that question about whether there are any plans to roll this out, um, there were sort of um, conversations right at the beginning but I think that the pandemic and everything that that's meant has meant that lots of things that conversations were started about have been put on hold um, and so I, I hope that we can continue those conversations and we certainly hope that we'll have some impact evidence to be able to show that this is a worthwhile investment. Um, we know that our family services teams uh, for every pound spent on the service, it's £11 saved in follow up stuff. So, I mean, I don't think we'll be able to put that kind of figure on this. That's not what we're aiming to do with this impact assessment. But we do know that this earlier sort of work, the empowerment of women, as Becky was talking about, um, it really does have an effect on, on the services that they require later on. So um, I would hope that we were able to contribute positively to the discussion and, and hopefully get some kind of outcome. I think that's a great, I think it's an interesting conversation, isn't it, about what we can learn and also what we can contribute. Sure. Um, but I certainly, I, I think that that amount that you mentioned there, I, I know it, we've, we maybe feel uncomfortable talking about the sums, but I think the reality is that it, it's saving women and parents significantly emotionally as well as financially. And we know that we can then use that money elsewhere. So I think one of the things that is also coming up in questions is a practical practice question and thank i've just seen that we've got cara here from children heard and seen hello another great organization working with uh, children of imprisoned parents um and one of the questions has been about how do you support video call when it, it it's not necessarily as easy to do even if even a phone call can be quite challenging to arrange but also um how do you how do you navigate the the tension um, where a parent is imprisoned for, a, for example, a violent offence, um, where the the 
the remaining parent in the home may have difficulties with that? How do you work with potentially towards family reunification post release? Um, I know that's a whole session in itself um, about working with fathers. I know we've put an emphasis today on mothers, but perhaps just for this this last session, um, please, you know, could you could you share with us maybe your experiences in working with children where the the, the risk of contact with a parent is is of concern? If I could come, um, uh, Katia, you you nodded at that point. So uh, would you be happy to? Oh no no, or either Katia or Becky. I could just quick, maybe we can share that one, Becky. Um, but just to quickly add that um, everything is always done in the best interest of the child. And we, so our job is to have discussions with those social workers to see what the risk is and how we can, um, you know, create, I don't know, think of something, think of, of options. We never want to just say no from the beginning. We'll always look as, at the whole, um, situation as a whole and see what we can come up with. So if it's a matter of, you know, the, the video being um, with a grandmother instead of with a, a, another person there or with us being in the room, like we're, we just tried to find as many solutions as possible without um, straight away going for, you know, this isn't possible. So this is what our role is here. Um, I don't know, Becky, if you want to add to that. Yeah, yeah, I would just echo it really, like I said, working with professionals. And sometimes actually there are restrictions on child contact put in place by the prison. Um, so it's a case of us working with professionals inside the prison and obviously like the local authorities where they're in place or with families um, to talk about what are the barriers to contact. Is that, are they practical barriers around, I just don't know what to do? Or as we spoke about with the visiting mum, pilot that was initially in place is it about getting to the prison or is it more concerns about risk how different family members are going to feel about contact taking place it is a very i know it's a horrible horrible answer but it is very much a case by case um situation and like i said the, the absolute bottom line of it though is that we would never want to encourage or promote something that we thought would be harmful to the child in those situations our role manifests more in supporting the mother in prison to understand those decisions and why they've been made um so yeah can i add something caroline to that i just want to give a, a bit of another side of things where you know what we're saying about we all we want to do what's best for the child and create those bonds and those relationships but sometimes the, the best thing for the child is not to have contact with with that person if they are violent. So I'm just thinking of a case that I'm working on now where it's just not appropriate for the children to see um, the mother and, and the best thing for everyone is for the mom to really um, come to terms with, you know, what's happened and, and grieve that whole situation. And that's our role to support them in seeing that. Um, and so it's not that we say, no, there's no contact, but we look at other things. So whether that's letterbox contact um, or just, you know, yearly updates or, or anything else um, but it's always in the best interest of the child that's going to reduce trauma on the child and make everyone be able to kind of move on with their lives and live the, the best and healthiest way so it's not like Becky said it's very case-by-case -case basis but we always think of what's best for um, the child and how we can support the mothers kind of get to that. No I, I, I thank you for that because I think it's yeah, it, it's a principled position, isn't it, about whether we can actually support people, but at the same time, it's putting the needs of the child at, at the centre um, and not uh, putting the needs of the system at the centre um, as well. So it's a, how do we as social workers help overcome barriers, for example? You know, I know um, certainly other agencies working in this area have talked about just the distances families are having to travel. Um, and particularly during lockdown. Um, if, if I could pass back to Helen um, for sort of closing comments, I, I get the feeling that an hour is just a paltry amount of time to be talking about what's an incredible piece of work. So I feel a bit guilty now that we only booked you for an hour. Um, but when you mentioned about the feedback and maybe if we could do it again, I'm, I'm not very good at letting go, you can tell. Um, <laughs> I think there's, there's definitely something here that I haven't heard for a long time being discussed in social work. Um, 
nearly as much. So if, if I can pass back to Helen and thank you so much for the day. Thank you, Caroline. I know you've got another event um, to rush off to, um, but we will collate the comments that people have made on the Menti um, document and circulate those to people who've attended. So thank you for contributing to that. Um, I know my kind of thought, my kind of main thought around barriers to um, engaging with people, parents in custody um, is time. And I know, you know, I remember um, a piece of research undertaken by my colleague Lisa Warwick and others, um, and it's entitled something like out of sight, out of mind. When people are placed further away, we think about them less. And I think in that instance, they were talking about young people in care. But I think it also applies to people in the prison system where you have, you know, as you said, a large, you know, large families to engage with lots of people to think about who are able to ring you, who you meet. Um, factoring in the person who's kind of physically out of the picture sometimes isn't what we do you know, rightly or wrongly. I remember doing in practice sort of last minute um, parenting assessments on fathers who were due to come out of prison in the near future that would have been better done at an earlier point, but I sort of didn't have necessarily permission to do it earlier because of so many other things going on. Um, so I do think, you know, we need to try and keep people present even though they may be physically out of, you know, out of our sort of view, really. Um, so thank you to everybody that's contributed and um, we have a couple more minutes. Um, how do you contact us, Cara? Um, our email addresses are on. So I work for the University of Birmingham. You can look me up there. Caroline works at the University of Essex. Um, you can look her up there and Joanne's contact details are on the slide that's on the screen at the moment. So if people want to get in touch, that would be great. And um, we will have further conversations about how to follow up on this event. It is being recorded and will be available on the Baswell website and as Joanne said she has put together a really useful fact sheet on how to engage with people in prison that we will send to attendees after this event so do look out for that and I suppose it's for us um, to think about what are our barriers to engagement on a local level and how can we improve on that is it forging better links with probation colleagues? Is it making contact with our local secure estate? You know, um, we do have time in terms of the criminal justice group. Someone's asked about the frequency of this meeting and um, their quarterly um, in general. So um, please do join us. We're looking for more Baswa members to join our criminal justice group, particularly those with um, experience of the criminal justice sector in whatever capacity. Um, we do have a couple more minutes for any last questions. If anybody would, anybody has a question, you can ask out loud um, or put it in the chat. That would be great. I was just telling us, so I'm really quickly going to add, just because we talked about it before and it stuck with me, but just to sort of put out there as like something to think about, just that, you know, like parents in prison, most likely in most cases will one day be parents back in the community. So it's about using this time that they're in prison in a really meaningful and constructive way so that when they are back in the community, hopefully, you know, that even if the outcome is not consistent and ongoing contact, but there is clarity for all people and some sense of closure as to what is going to happen. Mm. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think that's the problem, isn't it, in how we've kind of got to work in this arena in that um, we tend to do things towards the end of a sentence rather than really thinking about what can we do to support um, these relationships when that person's back in the community. Um, and all the research says we need better planning for release. We need better through care at every level of the criminal justice system. So, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, I haven't seen any more questions in the chat. Has anybody got any other questions or comments or suggestions for follow up events? We're welcome to um, take your feedback. I've got Louise Bennett with hand up. Do you want to speak, Louise? Hi. Hi yeah. So I, I was quite um, happy that I got this training. Um, I need to watch the recording because I've missed a lot of it. So apologies first for that. Um, as you can imagine, core team very busy. Um, but one of the things that that I became aware of is the the 
adoption side of things as well. So I've recently had a case um, where I've got a two-year-old little boy who we've been involved with more or less since birth. However, we have never engaged his father who's, who's in prison or out in the community because he's a registered sex offender and we know he's a risk to children. We know he's got no PR. We know he's not going to have any contact with this child long term. However, given that the situation has now escalated, i.e. this little boy is going to be potentially adopted, um, who's potentially his child, I have tried now to, to book a visit because I feel I need to explore not only him but his family members and I feel we owe that to that child to avoid delay and drift. Is there anyone in your family yet you might not be suitable, you might be in jail but they will have a, a lot of knowledge about their own family and their own support networks which could support our children and failure to address that properly would also prevent more delay for our children in the court system and, and make the permanence plans not okay and not right for them. So I just wanted to have learned from this, this situation but I'm glad that I had the insight to know I'm gone adoption's final, I need to seek out this dad you know because we've got no other family members now and he's now in care. So, you know, I'm glad I had the insight to do that as well because this is a child's life. Mm. Yeah, that was an incredible story, by the way, Lisa, I just got tingles a little bit. Like you said, that's, but that's really insightful and that's really amazing. And like you said, there's a child in this who is going to grow up and whatever life they end up living, do you know what I mean? Like they're going to know this someday, you know, what was explored and what wasn't and you know the decisions that were made that impacted their whole lives. Yeah I do think there's something really important about capturing family narratives that we miss as well through not engaging people with people in um, the prison system. Um, we're missing out on important kind of aspects of history really um, and experience. And to be um, fair, usually they're quite honest, aren't they? Because their family ties are broken. They might have insight in terms of risk, in terms of carers even within their own family, which I thought about. But yeah, yeah. It's, quite, it's quite an interesting subject that we often overlook, isn't it? It's one of them. We do it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Louise. Um, one final question in the chat we have um, from Claudine. Do you work with grandparents in custody if it's in the best interests of the children? Uh, yes, we do. <laughs> um, we, I, I know at my prison we have more um, people serving life, so there's more, um, there's elderly women there, so definitely yes we do. Um, if that's in the best interest of the children, if there's something we can put in place, then yeah, please reach out to us. And um, again, going back to the case by case basis, but yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm going to wrap up because we're due to finish at two o'clock. Um, so just to thank again, um, the team from PACT, very much appreciated for you your time and your dedication um, to this subject. Um, I'm sure we'll all be better off for it and we hope that this work expands within the prison system. So thank you. Um, and we will, as we said, circulate the information um, among attendees and continue to promote um, this agenda. Um, so thank you very much. Any final questions, please post in the chat and we will seek to get back to you with any um, answers. Um, so thank you and thank you for all of those that have attended today and contributed. Take good care. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you. you.